Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans and you're watching the John Cedars channel and this is an episode with a difference because for those of you who haven't heard, I do have some very lovely news to share and that's that we have another Evans in our family. Uh, Julia Leslie Evans was born on Friday the 22nd of March uh, very late on that particular day and it's a date that will easily be remembered because it's also the date that The Atlantic published its article uh, talking about Jehovah's Witness um, activism and the concealment of abuse featuring of course my friend and colleague Mark O'Donnell otherwise known as John Redwood so very easy date to remember for that reason but wow how special to be welcoming uh, another life into the world and she really is beautiful I've, I'm going every day to see her she's still not home from the hospital yet I'm hoping she'll be home tomorrow um, I've been having to hold the fort here at home with Jessica which is why my uploads have gone down over the last few days um, but yeah, I've been visiting mother and child at the hospital. There's just been a few issues with infections that they're wanting to completely eliminate before they re release Julia. But everything's looking positive at the moment for them to be sent home tomorrow. Gorgeous little girl. Um, we're, we're leaning towards her looking, resembling me more at this stage. <laughs> I'll let you decide because here's some footage of of her and yeah she's she's sleeping a lot obviously feeding a lot but she does have moments mostly at night where she's super alert and uh, wide-eyed and yeah very inquisitive uh, very good-natured uh, little baby not just screaming all the time which has been my experience <laughs> with babies no she's uh from what I can tell, just happy so long as she's being cuddled, happy so long as she's being fed. And uh, yeah, it's a delight to have um, another member of our family. Uh, Jessica has briefly met her in the corridor at the hospital just a few seconds before Julia had to be taken back. But yeah, Jessica's very much looking forward to being the big sister and You'll also notice that Jessica's initials, my initials, and Julia's initials are the same, J-L-E. Um, that wasn't, you know, what we were aiming for necessarily. Um, we just liked Jessica and we wanted the name Liberty in there when Jessica was born. And this time we liked the name Julia. And we'd already decided that if it was a girl, we would have her second name as Leslie, which is obviously the name of my late mother. So I think it's poetic that with our first daughter, we're looking forward at the future and we are sending hopefully a message to future generations that at some quite some personal expense, we've made it possible for them to enjoy mental freedom and that this is something that they should never take for granted. That's what we had in mind when we named Jessica, Jessica Liberty, and with Julia, it's it's a nice homage to where the, at least my family has has come from, um, to a very a very brave, very beautiful, very wise woman, uh, my mother who did die within the religion. She was fully believing Jehovah's Witness when she died. I don't make any pretense otherwise, but she was certainly an inspiration to me in the fact that she didn't appreciate being lied to. She didn't like hypocrites. Um, she didn't like bullies and she would in fact stand up to bullies if one arose. So those are traits that have very much informed the path I've taken with my life. And I hope that, that they are characteristics that Julia will also pursue. So, yeah, it's it's just thrilling. And um, my father is aware of Julia's birth. I got one word, <laughs> one word from him after sharing the news. And that was congratulations. That was it. And honestly, I don't want to go on too much 
about him, but it's saddening that at a joyous moment like this, we're still feeling the punishment radiating out from Watchtower for what it what amounts to little more than an act of conscience, an honest, genuine act of conscience. We can't we can't believe the religion anymore. It doesn't make sense. We wouldn't want it to be true even if it were because that would mean that we all have to look forward to living in a world where seven and a half billion men, women, women and children have just been slaughtered for not being Jehovah's Witnesses. We'd have to live with what's left of that atrocity a few feet underneath the uh, the turf, you know, landscaped over, and we'd also need to spend the rest of eternity praising the monster who's done that. No, thank you. So because we can't pretend to think that that's a good thing this is the treatment that we're getting and it's not just myself and Deanna who are receiving this treatment it's also our children Jessica and also already Julia who just gets a one word congratulations from my father no how did the birth go um is the is she okay um what's the possibility of coming to see her none of that She's already being shunned, and she's just, at this point, what's the date today? It's the 27th today, so she's only five days old. She's already receiving a degree of shunning. Uh, of course, my dad will say, well, I would come and see her as long as you and Deanna aren't there, and we've had other family members who seem to think that that is remotely acceptable. No, I'm sorry, we will not normalize shunning and we would be doing that if we allowed our JW family to in front of our child pretend that we don't exist so that's not going to fly <laughs> never will um <clears throat> you dad hopefully understands that he can come and visit our children at any moment so long as he is civil so long as he conforms to basic <laughs> basic etiquette of human interaction and doesn't pretend that we're not in the room, we're not going to ambush him with, oh, you're in a cult, oh, you're being lied to, what do you think you're doing following those men in New York? No, he can believe whatever he wants as far as I'm concerned. That has always been the case. The only issue I have is that family comes first, always has done, always will. And I'm just glad that Julia and Jessica have that opportunity. Um, I really hope that they never, ever take it for granted because Deanna and I have really given a lot to make it possible for them. And we're still giving, in a way, due to these repeated, not just through Dad, but in other situations that arise on an almost weekly basis, we're getting these reminders. Oh, things are different you don't get to be treated as fully human because of your conscientious decision. So I'm really glad that our children have escaped that. They know that no matter what happens in life, they will always have our unconditional, unadulterated love and support. It's just incredible for me to think that someone like my dad can go through that experience of seeing a new life enter the world and feel that wave of emotion, that wave of just raw affection for this little thing, this little package that's just arrived with just just overflowing with potential, overflowing with possibilities to become just this beautiful human being. And he can forget all that. He can for, he can be literally be ordered to pretend that none of that happened or to pretend that the person that he once welcomed with warm, loving arms essentially doesn't exist or should be treated as though they don't exist. 
I think that of all of Watchtower's abusive policies, this is one of the most, if not the most, reprehensible because no one deserves to be treated that way. As I've said before, we're we're social creatures. It's in our DNA to to have interaction with our fellow uh, Homo sapiens. We we need that reminder that we exist, and if we don't have that reminder, it drives us in some cases to insanity, and has driven people, as we've seen, to suicide. Those who just can't cope with losing that contact with their loved ones. So uh, shame on you, Watchtower, for doing this to my dad. But it's not going to stop me. Th that's the irony, is if anything, this treatment by my dad only fuels the flames, fans the flames. I like to think that I have enough compassion for my fellow ex-witnesses to pursue this cause whether I was being shunned personally or not I like to think I would still you know be picking up um, the crusade against this evil but it does put a fire in your belly when you're personally on the receiving end um, it's just wrong that I'm being punished for a decision I was coerced into making as an 11 year old when you know, who remains the same person as they were when they were 11? T point to one example of one person who is exactly the same mentally, emotionally, in terms of personality as they were when they were 11 years old. They don't exist, I'm sorry. It, it's wrong to ask that of someone. But anyway, <laughs> I'd better not turn this into a rant because truthfully, this is a, a happy time. And it's a cause for rejoicing. Um, a child is born and I'm just so proud to be its father and feeling the weight of responsibility to try and, you know, protect her and uh, be there for her and be her supporter, um, be her number one fan. I'll do my very best. But welcome Julia Leslie Evans into this world. If you're watching this when you're older, that's weird to think of. Um, if you're watching this when you're older, know that I love you so much. Always will love you. Always will be there for you, sweetheart. And yeah, mummy and daddy are very proud of you indeed. So viewers, before I get all emotional, <laughs> we better leave it there. Please don't forget to subscribe to the John Seeders channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching. Oh,